Hello and welcome to the DFS underscore PhD show for today, the 31st of January. Remember, you're good enough, you're strong enough, and gosh darn it, someone's got to win that money. And hey, congrats to BP, his second $100,000 plus hit of the year. One of my OGs, he's been giving me MME advice for over a year now. And yeah, like helped me get to the point where I have lots of money from this and can just sit around and have fun. So yeah, congrats to him. I saw that he's doing it uh, full time now as well. So let's get a few more hundreds. Let's get him a million, man. Let's get this kid uh, proper recognition and uh, living the good life. So, but I was looking at the um, optimal from the fifteen dollar because I think he wanted in the in the higher dollar hundred k. Um, and upsilon B, uh, single number one single entry. Always love to see it. But number two only used forty eight thousand four hundred salaries. So. I've been telling you to leave $200 on the table, but when you got a weird night like last night or weird scores like Neesmith scoring 57, DiVincenzo scoring 60, and these are like the highest scores on the plate, then then all of the all of the normal game theory rules go out the window. So um yeah, it was a fun night. Uh yeah, I got ruined because I I played Embiid like a you know, reasonably smart person would, and got yeah, 50% Embiid, not good. So hope you guys weren't sharks last night. Hope you were uh, playing the early games. I, I mean, yeah, it was an okay day, it was, but it wasn't. I like to win hundreds of dollars, not to lose tens of dollars. That's not fun. Okay, so um, tonight I waited long enough for the news. Hey, we got news, guys. Jokic is, is not going to play. So there's other news, too, obviously. Doncic is also not going to play, and Kyrie is not going to play. So... Well, we're gonna we're gonna have some of our team made up for us, aren't we? But I'm just gonna draw your attention to the and now I've I've said before, this is kind of like looking at splits in football. It's not really that predictive, but at the same time, and, and also it's a smaller sample than the the full sample, so we can be less confident in it, like with a one over square root of n thing from statistics, right? But at the same time, it's meaningful. Without Jokic on the floor, this is like something we talk about, you know, how bad the Nuggets are, right? So but specifically, how are they bad? Number one, Jamal hasn't been pulling his weight. He's minus five compared to with Jokic on the floor. Number two, Aaron Gordon is. He's smashing every time. We got like, oh, that's only 132 minutes of sample. So that's like pretty low sample. You're going to have DeAndre out there. You should probably put DeAndre in your lineups. You're going to have Reggie Jackson out there. You should probably put Reggie Jackson in your lineups. Actually, let me make sure that I actually click build. I did. Okay, good. Because I was waiting, I was trying to see if they would do a reset of the projections. But anyway, so did I say everything I want to say about this? Reggie Jackson, surprising usage bump. We've got 500 minutes in the sample. It's not an accident. He really does get the bump. So anyway, I, I bumped Reggie Jackson. DeAndre Jordan, yes, okay. Even more DeAndre Jordan, fine. Now, can we get the ownership to be reasonable on DeAndre Jordan? I don't need, want anybody to pretend like, okay, so honestly, like, yeah. DeAndre Jordan and Jaden Hardy on the slate are just locks. I mean, like, you could play 100% if you wanted to play 100%. You should probably play 90%. I don't know. Anyway, for me, Aaron Gordon is close to that level of a lock. I like Peyton Watson also because I think he will get some of those minutes. Although, they do sometimes do Zeke Naji. I don't know. We'll see. They've been liking Peyton Watson more. But now that I've talked myself a little bit out of it, I kind of need Watson to hit. So, hit some shots. I've messed around with some other things. Oh, wow. I, I got really close to projecting what they have for Reggie Jackson. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Reggie, let me look at all the Denver people. Okay. That's all fine. Just make sure I agree with the projections. Uh, I've changed. A, I've got a, a few rules on. The rules that I have set are max two out of three of the New Orleans big three. Um, so let me show you what I did with them. Zion, Brandon, and... McCollum. McCollum has a little bit lower ceiling than the other ones, but generally I don't think they're projecting Brandon and Zion high enough because they get blown out a lot and they also sometimes stink. And so I think you just got to max two out of three of these guys. That um, And the same thing with Phoenix. Uh, we got Durant, we got Beal. Those guys have a really high upside and we got to really bias it so that we're, we're seeing a little bit of that in our in our final lineups. Um, and then I did max two out of three with the big guys on Minnesota, like you know I like to do. But I didn't do Nas Reed as high because I'm worried about the blowout. And they do play guys like Luca Garza 
you know, like he's not, Nas isn't going to close in a blowout. So a blowout is not necessarily good for Nas. Um, so as a result, I, I didn't boost him to quite the same level I normally do just because I'm worried he gets kind of between a rock and a hard place. Like the main guys could get their points, but then there's like the bench guys rotation gets shortened or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and also I just don't want him to pop out as a best value on a slate with incredibly good value, incredibly good value. Like, I mean, Okay, so now, presumably, let's look at some of these exposures. Well, I don't think 90%, I don't think 80% Kawhi Leonard makes a lick of sense. I mean, he's fine, but do I need to have 80% Kawhi Leonard? No. I need, like, I don't know, 45% Kawhi Leonard is fine. He's not, he doesn't, like, super stand out, but he's obviously underpriced, and they're playing Washington. They should smash him. I mean, I get why he's there, but at the same time, meh. Okay, so um, I also adjusted Jabari Smith Jr. to a smash case because I just, the, the people, the, they're giving him that time. Jabari Smith stats, just to confirm. Yeah, he got 36 minutes. I mean, like, they're playing this kid a zillion minutes whenever he's playing. I do see he just came back from injury, but 41 minutes right before, 36 right after, 41. I mean, yeah, there's a few 31 duds in here, but also I think we got some blowouts. We've got, anyway, so I... I don't know what's going on there. Same thing with Wendell Carter Jr. I think I saw him being a little bit underprojected. We had 29 minutes in the last game. And what did we have him for in the projections? Mostly, though, I, I agree with you. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it didn't matter at all. I still don't get any Wendell Carter Jr. This is why you should maybe just run the projections before, or run the Sims and then start making your tweaks, right? Because, I mean, who cares with, like, some of these tweaks I've made that are just not even going to show up on the final anything. I mean, what is going to show? Oh, gosh, how much Dinwiddie do we have? No, thanks. 10% will be fine. It's an absolute max on. And he's still underpriced. Dinwiddie's underpriced, but he's got to hit shots and he isn't hitting shots. So I hate it. I mean, like 15% really is where I should put that, but I just can't. 15% cap on Hardaway is obviously lifted. He has to hit shots, but I mean, kind of could get there with like rebounds and stuff. I assume we're projecting him for a fair number of rebounds and like assists and stuff. Right, with Jokic off the floor. Uh, Jokic, Doncic, you know what I mean. With the resident Eastern European off the floor. All right, 30. We want to at least match the field on the greatest plays. And he's definitely one of the greatest plays. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., just like, I just can remember so many times with, with Jokic out where he just hasn't done it. So he still has to hit his shots, you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't get that massive boost that... Uh, I think it's a little bit of one, like three point boost, four point boost. Yeah, okay, fine. We we'll, we we'll give him, we we'll give you so you can have a little bit more Michael Porter Jr. If you want a little bit more Michael Porter Jr., you can have a little bit of Josh Green. That's fine. Yeah, there's nothing. I got no more stands though. You know what I mean? Like Brandon Miller's fine. He's priced up, but I mean he's still gonna have that shot. Um, Washington Clippers. Th this is not gonna. It's a ten point spread. You got to think about, you know, plays today, like how much of these, yeah, Kawhi, like, do I really want in a blowout? Does he get there in three quarters? He might need to get there in three quarters against Washington. He might get there in three quarters against Washington. I don't know. I mean, because like they just don't have enough other people, particularly if PG sits for, for like other people to smash. I mean, what are we going to have like a 60 point game from Norman Powell? Lock it in with me, with me laughing at it like that. But anyway, that's my general point. I think that does it's fine to have a fair amount of Kawhi tonight. Although I don't understand why I would have so much Kawhi and no Harden. What's going on there? Let's dig into that a second. Yeah, what's what's going on there? Yeah. I don't know, guys. I think you could you probably gotta even this out a bit. So let's let's even this out as such. Cause they're fine plays. The game blows out. One of those guys is going to have a smash type game, particularly assuming that Paul George is out. But like, I don't know. Do you know who it is? I don't know who it is. It's one of them. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. So, and then Washington, like, ugh, yeah, don't play. Gross, man. They've been killing me on the the um, prize picks as well. So, not going back to that. Well, I've learned my lesson. My lesson is, uh, yeah, don't don't play the spicy boys. I like I like the I like them. 
I want alt lines, man. I, I don't live in a legal betting state. I want some reasonable alt lines, but these are not reasonable alt lines. So until they are, I can't really do it even when I, well, I don't know. Cause I mean, we didn't hit yesterday, but then at the same time, the reason I took those lines is that every time those guys would hit their regular lines, they hit their alt lines and in the same, they didn't hit their regular line either. So I mean, anyway, so whatever you can hear me rationalizing and, uh, but let me see what else. So core today. Well, yeah, don't get cute. Uh, play the play the best plays. Now let's let's revisit ownership. They're going to update ownership for post Jokic. I just want to see if I if I can get a reasonable gauge of how much Aaron Gordon. Yeah, twenty percent. That's better. Because I don't want to take an impossible stand on Aaron Gordon, but I do want to have sixty five percent of Aaron Gordon. I mean, like you know what I mean? He's so underpriced now. I, he's so underpriced. He's so underpriced. You can't. There's just and and. If he stays 20%, I just have to have him. I just have to have as much Aaron Gordon as absolutely possible. Does he eat into some of my DeAndre Jordan? Huh, that's interesting. Didn't see that coming. They're in utility spots, I guess. I don't really want more Aaron Gordon than DeAndre Jordan. Let's make that equal. Or a little bit more DeAndre. Now that it's clearly, yeah, okay, equal. Okay, so it's Hardy, it's Gordon, it's DeAndre Jordan. And uh, beyond that, Jamal Murray, obviously. I mean, I'm like doing 35%. This must be a cap from like earlier or something. I don't know. I, it's also possible that like, oh, right. My stand on Jamal is a little bit not as strong, right? My, my stand is like, number one, we could be seeing time for regression to the mean on his... Um, what's it called court IQ, but then also maybe it's just easy to game plan for a small point guard. You know what I mean? Like with Brunson, you can see him get shut down sometime with like a double team. I don't think it's like an impossible task to show. I, I mean, I agree with Becky Hammond. If we're, if you guys are up on your ESPN controversies, it's tough to have your one superstar be a small guy. Like that's like, you can really game plan a small guy out of the picture and then the other guys have to be part of it. I think generally speaking, I have seen Steph play, but I've also saw Durant playing on a lot of those teams. Anyway, I, I think that it's not an ironclad point, but generally speaking, that's the issue. Um, so I was talking about small people for some reason, my apologies if I've offended anybody. I got to get my kid from school, so I'm going to probably... I got to figure out how much Michael Porter Jr. now. So 18, yeah, I want to be over the field on Michael Porter Jr., but he still has to get shots. Nah, I'm not changing that. Uh, okay. Wemby is fine. I'm matching the field. Jabari Smith Jr., yeah, I'm taking a bite. Yes, it could kill me, but I am play GPPs. I'm trying to win. I'm not trying to get, like... I'm not trying to cash in a, in a cash game. It's, like... Who cares? That's just something I'm never going to care about. Okay, I don't play cash games. So, I mean, I play my brother in cash games for fun because we're brothers. But not. I'm never going to do that. Like, oh, I got a Zion. Is that a Zion midday downgrade? Oh, Zion midday downgrade. Yeah, he wasn't questionable at all. So, we just popped that on. A Zion midday downgrade. What do we do? Well, assuming that a midday downgrade means he's out. Number one, we get him out of our general assessment of the slate. We go over here to Court IQ and we say, what's up, New Orleans? What do we have with Zion off the court? Because that seems to be where we're trending at this point. Why else would we have gotten this update? If not for them to be in compliance with injury reporting standards when he is out. Uh, and we've got, no surprise here, a little bit extra McCollum. So we want to bump McCollum up to like 43 yeah, it's going to be a lot higher for him. So now we're getting to a, f a significant amount of McCollum, but he still has to hit shots. So I don't know. I'm not going to probably boost that above 15% still. 15% uh, is generally my limit for shooters just because in my own life, that's about how often I have a good game shooting. <laughs> I mean, like a good, good game, the kind where you would want me on your fantasy team. So it's also roughly the degree to which it seems like it happens with people like Sam Merrill and like, you know, Struess and those guys seem to pop off every 10th game, every ninth game, every eighth game, something like that. So that's, that's why that's my limit. It's basically like flipping a coin with an appropriate weight.
Uh, okay, so bup, bup, bup. that's it. I mean, I don't think I have anything else to say. So let me just say you're good enough. You're strong enough. And gosh darn it, someone's got to win that money. Might as well be 